NerdErotic.com. Tuesday, I pushed this back for Monday due to scheduling conflicts that I am going to experience over the next two weeks because of life. Because of life. Uh, let's get rid of that music right there, and then we'll just go, hello. Hi, everybody. Who do we have here today? This is the Nerd Roddick Nooner. My name is Gary Beekler. I am live in San Francisco, California. And we are joined by Rob Downs, Gary Hewitt, Don't Try It. Oh, man, you tell me not to try something and I want to try it. Eric Hawk, uh, Corsium Apocrypha, Mutated Genome, Alex Moore, Fixie Clary, Freshman Other One, Mark Santos, Uncle Remus, Cynical, uh, oh my God, Cynical Lindsay, and it's starting to move a little too fast, uh, Live and Flames, Weeping Baker, Thunder... Thundar the Barbarian. I love that cartoon. Oberion. Ah, oh, thank you so much for the super chat. We will get to that shortly. Scottish nerd. Chris Corcoran. Zev. Alex vs. I just lost it. Father. Oh, well, like we got to. I got to watch my language. Father Christopher Miller is here. And greetings to everyone else. I would like to start out with a couple of. Let's do some business here first. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me have some of my piping hot coffee. Ah, sip a coffee for the strong female lead in your life. Um, we want to start out by, by, of course, if you like what I do and you enjoy independent content here on YouTube, please consider subscribing to the channel. That is the only way independent content creators like yours truly and your favorite YouTuber like Bulls Trek, Clownfish TV, Jeremy at Geeks and Gamers. That's the only way we can stay competitive against the giant corporations that YouTube is prioritizing on this platform. Recently, they did a bot scrub uh, about a week ago, so make sure if you've come across this that you're still subscribed and all that. Also, uh, thanks to Tom at Midnight's Edge. Please subscribe to Midnight's Edge and Midnight's Edge After Doc, Dark, Doc, uh, Rob, Tom, of course, Andre. Uh, great guys over there. Tom made me aware of a channel that is impersonating me right now bound to happen it's part of the territory uh i currently am going through the process of uh doing a trademark violation uh it's a well, it's a trademark it's claim or something like that but i'm going through the process uh my uh, nerdrotic and the image is trademarked so i have to go through youtube to get that taken care of but if you see somebody impersonating me in a live stream chat just look for the check mark if the if it's not grayed out it's not a check mark it's not me, uh, but you know we've seen this before. Famously, uh, Mark Wade was uh, trolling a, a chats of uh, in the early Comicsgate days, uh, and it was kind of funny, really, to be honest with you. But uh, yeah, you got to watch out for that stuff. You got to watch out for that stuff. So today, uh, I am on a time limit today, so I have to stop at one p.m. Pacific time because I have an appointment today. So I'm going to try to whittle away at some of the super chats that are left over and 
it'll just be a few. And then I'm doing a super chat square up later this afternoon. So I'm going to be going live twice today after my appointment, of course. But we do need to talk about the Doctor Who ratings and Star Trek Picard. Uh, is it a success? Is it a failure? Quite honestly, uh, it's a little too early to tell, but we are already seeing signs that I don't know if I want to go so far as to call it a failure, uh, but interest is waning. Can we say that? I think we can say that fairly. Uh, and we will go over that. Bounding into Comics did an article four days ago on this subject. Uh, John F. Trent was on uh, Friday Night Tights last week, which is on Nerdrotic Live. But we'll start with the American Doctor Who ratings. Let's start with those, shall we? Uh, let me make sure everything is... Okay, here and then, <clears throat> excuse me, we're going to go over here. Da, da, da. All right. How did that get over there? Jesus. That's, that's top-notch professionalism here on YouTube, right? These are the latest ratings here in the States where Doctor Who is dead. It's just flat out dead. Now, we'll hear the excuse that the Super Bowl was on. I'm guessing there's not a ton of crossover from uh, Doctor Who fandom to sports ball. Uh, and quite frankly, the game was over, uh, essentially. And you could have watched it. Uh, I think it, yeah, yeah, no, the game was still going, I think. <clears throat> and I, by all accounts, it was a good game. I did not watch it. Uh, I did a video on Sports Wars about why I don't watch football anymore. Go check it out. Uh, so we had a an 18 to 49 demo. We had a 0.13, which is abysmal. We had 464,000 people watching it overnight. Now, the way they accumulate stuff, the, the seven-day DVR and uh, just anybody who's watching it on uh, like YouTube TV or iTunes... Honestly, I don't trust those numbers because you're guessing because those companies don't share their numbers with anybody, but the estimate usually is double the audience. So it's not even cracking a million viewers. Now cable TV is pretty much dead here in the States. It's on its way out. Nobody really watches BBC America anymore. Uh, I, I unplugged years ago, so I don't watch it. Uh, I do believe it's on sling, but this is a 15.4. Uh, four eight percent drop from last week. The most important takeaway of this is that last week, the previous week's episode had the return of Captain Jack and the first female of color doctor played by Joe Martin, along with the first female doctor played by Jodie Whittaker, who is now no longer the first female doctor in the uh, in the canon of Doctor Who, which is currently being utterly obliterated. And again, I want to restate, I have heard all of your arguments about my rumor. Uh, my rumor, of course, is that the first female of color doctor, played by Joe Martin, will be indeed uh, a prior doctor to James Hartnell's, uh, William Hart what did I say James Hart? William Hartnell's, Jesus Christ, Doc 5 Nerd Points from Nerdrotic, from William Hartnell's first doctor uh she might possibly be the first or an entire cycle of regenerations that were all female prior to his to the uh, original canonized doctor uh, again it's a rumor i hope it's not true it's something that i heard was bandied about now when the rumor was presented to me it was in one sentence okay so i'm gonna try to remember how it was an email saying your prediction might be spot on. They are playing with making the doctor originally female. That's it. Uh, and I asked a couple of follow-up questions and I got some firm I don't knows. I can't tell you. Uh, and that was it. And I sat on it for months. I hope it's not true. I've heard that they could make this kind of like a war doctor, which they certainly could. But I'm trying to use the woke BBC logic on this. Now, the reason it won't be the Volyard is because you wouldn't make the first female doctor of color played by Joe Martin an evil duplicitous doctor. Unless, of course, I don't know, they, she regenerated good. But that's still her originally being male. You have to think 
with the BBC logic right here. So I think it's a possibility, but uh, it certainly could be like the war doctor as well. She could be the, you know, doctor 2.5 or something. I don't know. We'll figure it out, but it's not going to be an alternate reality doctor. The, the fact remains that Captain Jack returned. You had this this other doctor show up and a much better TARDIS with a much better performance. And that was basically, it's a, uh, we have a saying here in the States that was their hail Mary and it didn't work. It flat out didn't work ratings. I thought the ratings would spike just on captain Jack alone. And they decreased telling me that they are just going to get worse because they have no more gimmicks till the end of the season. And then we'll get another 16 month break, 14 month break. And then we'll get Jody's final season. And those ratings will be abysmal. Now, um, now there's people out there. I'm sorry. I'm forgetting the YouTuber's name. I was trying to rack my brain and I apologize. He did a deep, a deep dive on the ratings for Doctor Who, and he compared it to, to the Capaldi era. And when you figure in the consolidated numbers, Jody really isn't doing better than the Picaldi, uh, Capaldi era. She is actually doing worse percentage-wise, uh, especially now, because Capaldi received better consolidated numbers than Jody, And that is indeed true. So at the... the best the, the most you can spin this is that it's uh they're flatlining right now they're just even but that spike is over with the gimmick is done they tried another gimmick it didn't work and now and you know you need the states oh crap what happened there window capture got do 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 oh hang on i lost my chat now uh oh, uh, uh, we gotta get rid of. I'm gonna keep this up for a second, and then I need to go get. Oh, this is like really great. Ah, there we go. And how did the hell did it get all the way over? Oh, that's hilarious. Hang on. Well, that's not going to work. Let's try this window capture. Give me just a moment. We'll try that. That should work. Boom. Aha. There we go. All right. And then we'll get you guys back down there. I apologize, but this is why I need a producer, folks. Boom. There. Well, that totally broke my uh, train of thought there. So, um, what we are left with is a destroyed franchise. And we have Star Trek Picard out there as well. Now that has kind of split the, uh, there's a divided fan base already. And now it's further divided because there, Picard certainly has its fans. And again, if you like Doctor Who and you like Star Trek and you like Disney Star Wars, I don't have, a, I I'm, don't care. I seriously don't care. If you like it, you go off and enjoy it. Have your fun. Um, this is, uh, I, I don't. And this is a place to talk about that. There are plenty of places to go talk about how much you like a show. There are plenty of channels out there that you can do that as well. Have fun. We are here to debate why I don't like it and why some of you don't like it. Um, with, Do with Doctor Who, I, I don't know where they go from here. I know our good friend Noel is using, using the hashtag Save Doctor Who, which I put on Twitter in support of Noel, who has been viciously attacked. Uh, Bulls Trek has been viciously attacked for simply not liking a TV show. And we're seeing people go to really extreme sick levels. And, you know, that's why I, I don't acknowledge it when it comes my way. I generally ignore it. Uh, but 
that's me. It's not for me to judge who ignores uh, what comments they get or not. Uh, but I figure if you don't give it oxygen, it, but you know, the thing is some YouTubers like to remain anonymous for precisely this reason. And, uh, I don't blame them at all. They don't want to deal with the crap in their personal lives, especially if they have a day job that some psychotic person would call. Uh, I've had, I experienced that a little bit. Somebody gave my wife a negative Yelp review because of my views on Captain Marvel. Uh, which, you know, that's, that, that kind of stuff happens. It does. That's part of the internet. And I understand that. Uh, but just perspective, you know, debate the argument, you know, debate why you, why you like the show. Give me a good reason why you like, I mean, I could listen. I, I could definitely understand somebody's logic with Star Trek Picard, especially if you're just a super casual Star Trek fan or you were never into it before. That's basically who it's made for. It's not made for Star Trek fans. Doctor Who, I don't know how anybody could objectively like this. I can see somebody liking it because it's confirmation bias, basically. But it's it's not entertainment. It's edutainment. Um, so we've had this rating spin, and we've been fighting this battle for a couple of years now. And I think apathy is just set in with Doctor Who. I think people just don't care anymore. That's the thing I hear the most in the live streams. Uh, that's the thing I... Oop, I got stuck. That's the thing I hear the most uh, in, uh, in the comment section is just, I don't watch it anymore. I'm not interested in it anymore. Uh, and I don't blame them at all. Uh, but that, this is the show that again, you know, kind of stung me the worst because it was the one I was the most into and they fundamentally changed their main character and they didn't think, uh, they didn't have to, they would have to change anything else. They didn't think, uh, they thought they would breeze, breeze by and get away with this. And they thought they could shame people for criticizing the show uh, because there's hey, a lot of people don't like it for a lot of reasons. And it's not just the female doctor. Um, it's the, usually the, it's the baggage that goes along with swapping genders, swapping race, uh, which really does a disservice to your message. Uh, when you come out blathering, uh, virtue signaling, uh, in, especially prior to your show or movie coming out, like we're experiencing with birds of prey right now. Uh, that's my next video. That'll be out this afternoon. Uh, you end up damaging your message. If you wanted to get it across, maybe subtly by not offending half of your audience, uh, especially in these hyper divisive times. Uh, and you know, I'm not saying you have to change your politics, just consider the other side. And we're not even at that point. Now I'm not asking buddy, anybody to change their side. We need sides. We need choices. I understand that. Uh, but in doctor who specifically and, uh, star Trek <clears throat> where you can play with it politically a little bit, you know, there's some leeway with star Trek and most definitely star Wars. You, uh, that is where you kind of draw the line. Uh, and now we're seeing the consequences of this and it's going to keep going though. I know, uh, we, you know, the winds, which a lot of us were talking about the winds of change were coming and they are, we got the Chappelle effect, but it's just, it's going to take time. It's going to take a couple of years. We debated this on Friday night tights. Some of us thought it's happening. Some of us thought it would be years away. And some of us thought it would never happen. And, uh, but there you go. We all are an echo chamber apparently. Um, which I don't know what this, we and all are is stuff. Again, I maintain that the fandom menace is simply a hashtag that I, uh, identify with that. I, uh, support, uh, that I support respecting the fan. I resport, res uh, resport. I support respecting American mythology. Sip of coffee. Um, but let's go to you guys real quick. Uh, there also, we're going to go to this, uh, bounding into comics article, uh, but back real quick. Um, to my good friend Bulls Trek and Critical Drinker, uh, they both joined me on a live stream right after Doctor Who, which was uh, is a fun live stream, by the way. It's on Nerdrotic Live, and thank you guys for joining. Uh, I don't know why Bull poor Bulls Trek has become the lightning rod for some of these people. I generally don't see the uh, abuse he gets, and he you know he knows you know it's part of the game too. Uh, it's Doctor Who fans are actually the worst. 
the the ones that are left are the worst. Uh, I know my mind changes on this, but Star Wars fans have been lovely compared to Star Trek fans and Doctor Who fans. Uh, now, when I went to the Star Trek convention and in every uh, all of these uh, so, supposed Star Trek Discovery fans had every opportunity to walk up to me and s- tell me their feelings, and I wouldn't have done anything. I'd have just sat there and go, okay, uh, that's how you feel. Uh, they didn't do that. They didn't do that. Uh, I had people in Discovery cosplay uh, coming up and shaking my hand and thanking me for what I do uh, because they understand. They understand. And, you know, people just want to enjoy this stuff. We, we do. We really want to enjoy Doctor Who. Um, you, Chris Chibnall never gave us a chance. Uh, there's a video out there by uh, Flower Productions and Starry-Eyed Girl. Or, I'm sorry, the third female Doctor played by Starry-Eyed Girl uh, shared this with me in a DM, this video, uh, which is a parody of basically the Chibs writing room, Chris Chibnall writing room for Series 11. Uh, it's a bunch of British kids doing a skit. It, I loved it. I freaking loved it. Um, I shared it on the community section on Twitter and on Facebook. So you can go check it out there. It's called Chibs, a parody or a doctor who parody. And again, it's flower production. So when you get a chance, go check it out. It had a couple, almost a couple thousand views. Wanted to help them out. Cause I thought they were, they weren't mean spirited at all. It was pretty funny. And, uh, yeah, you know, it was kids. I like that. Um, do, 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 do. Let's get over here. We're going to get to a couple of your questions. Then I'm going to get to some Q&A from uh, the Doctor Who live stream, which is applicable to what we're talking about now. Probably, probably a rhetorical question, but will Bop Flop by Apocrypha for $1.99? Birds of Prey, uh, it, yes, it could. Uh, that's what my next video is about. Um, spoilers. I went to multiple theaters on Fandango this morning and over the last weekend and ticket sales just aren't there. But mysteriously, there's three theaters here in the entire Bay Area that have a lot of tickets sold and then none, none others, none of the others do. Uh, Sending love and positivity to Mama Nerdrotic. From Oberon, thank you for the 20 uh, Swedish or Danish Krona. Uh, Thank you. And that, is uh, why my schedule has been nuts lately. And uh, my uh, mom Roddick is not doing very well. So I'm going to have to probably leave at the drop of the hat, a drop of a hat and go back down to San Diego in the next few days. I don't think it'll interrupt the channel that much. If anything, I'll just take my stuff on the road. But yeah, that's, that's why I haven't been putting out a ton of content. I've been going live a lot, but I haven't been putting out a ton of content because I mean, frankly, there are times when uh, my headspace isn't really into the culture war at the time uh, because of uh, real life stuff. Uh, but it's, uh, you know, it, we're going to get it worked out. We're going to get it worked out. Um, there is a solution to every problem out there if you're willing to look at it. Uh, Christian Basil for $5. Sorry to hear what happened. Reach out to me when you can. No one I should be, uh, no one should be shunned for their opinions. Not when my show is about, that's not what my show is about. Thanks, man. Sorry. And it's not, it wasn't your show, Christian Basil. I don't know if you heard on the live stream. Uh, so there's a person, uh, Christian Basil does uh, Legend of the Traveling Tardis show on iHeartRadio. I've been a guest on that with other Doctor Who people. And he is making the best effort to try to bring the Doctor Who fan uh, community uh, together. Um, I don't think it's possible, especially when we have uh, YouTubers and podcasters calling other YouTubers and podcasters failures in life. And you'll always be a failure, which is what happened to my friend, Noel, uh, from the TARDIS Zone. uh, And that was from a fellow content creator. We'll just, uh, Noel posted it on his Twitter and you can go check it out. That's completely uncalled for. Uh, it's, It's a dick move. Uh, it's classless and I have no respect for you when you do stuff like that. And I got no time for you. Uh, but Christian, it is not your fault. You have always tried to reach out to people. You're a good man and, uh, support legend of the traveling TARDIS. And we will uh, get you back on again. I've, I've had him on, I've been on his show and I will be on his show again. 
uh, when schedule allows. AFK Bard for five dollars. Gary, as a previous business owner, could you get could you get away with advertising that you prefer a specific race or gender? Just questioning the legitimacy. Uh, or the legality, I'm sorry, the legality, because I can't read. Um, it's not legal here in California to do that. Uh, I'm guessing it's not legal in any other state. Also, I would like to remind everybody who lives in California that it's not legal to discriminate based on political views either. Uh, so that can get your, get your ass sued. Uh, and I think more people should do it. if they feel, It's hard to prove. That's the thing. It's very hard to prove. Uh, but no, you cannot do that. I could not go to my comic shop and go, well, I don't want any white people coming in today. Um, and, you know, I hate it when we have to, I mean, we get put in this position, right? Uh, but I hate it when we have to qualify that, uh, you know, when somebody accuses you of being an ist or a phobe or accuses me of being an ist or a phobe, our first reaction go, is go, no, I mean, I've got friends and da, 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 da. It's like, no. Uh, and that's the whole point. And, and that accusation should be made when it's applicable and only when it's truly applicable. Otherwise it loses its power. And we need that accusation to be applicable when people are really being ists and phobes. And when you pretty much devalue it, not devalue, but when you undercut that, it, uh, that phrase loses its power and then you have to get more hyperbolic. That's that, and, and now I'm hearing stuff I won't even repeat on this live stream. People being called that regularly. Uh, stuff that, you know, uh, eh, 20 years ago gets you popped in the mouth. Um, so, no, it's not legal and it, it's ridiculous. Uh, and if you ever, on my, web, my shop website no longer exists, but we used to have, an, uh, you know, an employee page for the employees to put their pictures up and give them, uh, put up their bios. And if you saw my employees, uh, you would know that the first person I hired was a black man. Uh, the second person I hired was a, an Asian woman. The third person I hired was a Nicaragua Nicaraguan. Well, I can't talk today, man. Nicaraguan woman. And, the fourth person I hired was a gay Latino, but I'm an instant phobe. So whatever, uh, Sean Kesey for five pounds, doctor who getting positive feedback in the UK consolidated ratings. Okay. Last season was garbage, but this one is improving. Just think Jody is the weak link. Uh, Sean, um, thank you for the five pounds. That's not true. Um, the consolidated ratings, are not very good. Um, well, let's bring them up right now. We can do that. Uh, Doctor Who season 12 consolidated. Uh, da -da -da -da. Ratings accumulator. We're going to go right here. And uh, yeah, I just beg to differ. And I will agree with you on one point, though, that season 12 is a is an improvement over series 11 but not that much of an improvement uh it's still garbage but it at least they're making an attempt to try to feel like doctor who but they're just repurposing and remaking tenant era stuff so let's uh i can't use that one I'll give me just a second here, and we got to go back to that. So, Jesus. That's what happens when it gets all jacked up before you start. All right. So, consolidated ratings uh, over this season have been tepid. They end up getting about a million after the overnight, uh, which Capaldi... Uh, was getting almost 2 million. Now, his overnight ratings were lower. They were. Uh, but people felt more inclined to watch it on their iPlayer. And I need to remind you how the iPlayer judges a view. They judge it the same way that YouTube does, meaning somebody can just dip in for a couple minutes and they count that. 
Uh, so the, the percentage of people that watch a video from beginning to end on YouTube, which is much shorter, is 13 to 15%. I will give the iPlayer 30%. So if 1 million people, uh, they're saying 1 million people watched Doctor Who on their iPlayer, chances are it was about 300,000 who watched it all the way through or watched the uh, majority of the episode, 70% of the episode. So we have... 5.57 million right here on the right as the consolidated number. We don't have the consolidated number for the latest episode. We won't have it for a couple days. My guess, uh, I'll, I'll, I would say it won't even be a million. So we're still under five. Now, Jody's last season, uh, on, if we go to, I think there's a link. There we go. There's the last season. We go to the sixth episode. Her consolidated numbers were 7.48 million. What has not been brought up that needs to be brought up is Capaldi, his episodes aired on Saturday. Jodie Whittaker's air on Sunday. More people are at home watching TV. Now, I will defend the Doctor Who ratings here in the States on this one point only. Uh, previously, uh, when it aired on Saturday, that is the worst day to air anything in the States. And I think that does factor into why they air Dr. Who on Sunday now, because nobody watch, nobody is at home on Saturday watching TV. If you are here in the States, you know, they don't put any primetime programming of any significance up on Saturday. It's just a day where people don't watch a lot of TV, but apparently you do in the UK. But Sunday is still a better day for television, and it's still not working. So she's down 2 million viewers uh, from episode 6 of series 11. The factors are people don't like the show. It's too politically correct. Jodie Whittaker, uh, the campaign, there's too many companions. Uh, also, there was a giant break in between series. Now, people love to point out Capaldi's series 10. Remember, there was another giant break, and that was after a break before Series 9. The BBC has done this show absolutely no favors by taking so many breaks. And it, there's no excuse other than the BBC's cheap. And, by the way, if you watch the latest uh, Sargon video, uh, which I did because somebody kindly sent it to me, uh, at Gary at Nerdrotic.com, he was talking about the BBC now needs to, get, uh, needs to cut some uh, they need to save some pounds. They need to cut uh, 18 million from their budget. So they uh, fired a bunch of news anchors. And well, I could make a suggestion on how you could save a ton of money right now. Uh, and I know, like, even when Doctor Who was successful, uh, especially the news people and uh, the people from other shows, there was a lot of jealousy for Doctor Who because it sucked up all the money that and Top Gear. Uh, I can't believe Top Gear is still in the air. I could, I, it's unwatchable now. Used to be one of my favorite shows. Love freaking Top Gear. Uh, but I, yeah, I respectfully disagree. But uh, I, but I will agree, Sean, that it is an improvement. Uh, Zev for ten mm, ten Polish dollars. Is it me or is the microphone being too quiet? Is it? Hang on. Da, 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 da. I can. Turn it up a little bit. Uh, 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 uh. Hang on. I got to now I got to check and see if my microphone was too quiet. You're going to hear me for a second here. So give me just a second. Ten Polish dollars. Is it me or is the microphone being too quiet? Is it? Nah, it was you. It was you, but it's okay. Thanks for letting me know. I appreciate that. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. Okay, but Zev, thank you for uh, for donating money uh, to get make me aware of that. I do really appreciate that, and uh, yeah, just crank up that volume a little bit. Cracklin for a dollar ninety nine. Woke feminism is where beloved franchises go to die. Yeah, I don't know exactly who they're making Birds of Prey for. Um, Matthew Kadish, a uh, good friend of the channel, on Twitter brought this point up and got eviscerated uh poor guy but he can handle it and and really Ma matthew kadish is 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 reasonable he's a very reasonable person not the kind of person you want to 
uh, like go after like that. He's, it's not like he's all full of uh, hyperbole or he is hyperbolic. Uh, thank you, Cracklin. I appreciate you. And I, oh, I'll return that email today. I'm sorry. I was supposed to get back to you yesterday. I will turn your email today. Thank you for reaching out. You're awesome. Justin Gould for $4.99. Hail, hail, Justin. What's up, my friend? Welcome. Thank you for the $4.99 donation. R. Far for $3.49 New Zealand pesos. We'll just call them pesos. Uh, down in Middle Earth. I can't wait. I will get on a plane to go to New Zealand. And I hate flying. But we're going to do it. I've got to go to the Shire. i got to see Hobbit. i got to see Bag End. Doctor Who's paying reparations? Hmm. Well, I mean, that's pretty much what the, uh, uh, I don't know, maybe that, maybe through the TV license, which, oh, back to that Sargon video, uh, Boris, uh, your prime minister is talking about getting rid of the TV license. And I think it, they should, uh, taxation is theft, especially <clears throat> when, you know, we have public broadcasting, so we do pay tax money to to that, it's not much. It largely lives off of donations, but it's supposed to be fair. Now, a private uh, corporation doesn't need to be fair and balanced, but if it's funded by the government, it should be. Uh, and clearly, the BBC is not representing everybody in the UK. Uh, by the way, uh, happy Brexit to uh, all of you out there. Are you guys okay? Your country hasn't sunk into the ocean. The sky hasn't fallen. Everything okay in the UK? Uh, CM Shazam for $4.99. Current leftism is a parasite. It worms its way into your favorite franchise and eat and reproduce eats and reproduces until the host dies. Hail from NorCal. Oh, what's up, CM Shazam? Hail. Hail Nor. Uh, that's right. You guys call it NorCal. I call it NoCal, but that's because I'm a SoCal. Um, yeah, and it's, it's a certain brand of leftism now, though it's not, uh, what people call the classic liberals like Sargon, who was accused of being like, right. And all that stuff, which is, you know, again, it's these hyperbolic, erroneous accusations that I mean, have brought us to where we are, uh, why a hashtag like the fandom menace exists, why there's movements and consumer movements to fight this stuff. And at the bottom line is we want to keep giving you money. Could you, I don't know, just try to be a little neutral. I mean, we know why, and we know why they don't care about, especially the BBC does not care about making money because they had all that guaranteed money. Uh, but hail from Northern California, Ryan for 50 pounds. Picard has plot issues. However, I, as a star Trek fan for three decades, don't have an issue with an imperfect uh, 24th century where Starfleet has lost its way. Are, uh, are we to pretend that Roddenberry envisioned perfection? How boring would that be? Um, it would be boring. And I don't think Roddenberry envisioned perfection for that society. I think he envisioned it to not be as jaded. To have moved on, you can still represent that in other societies, alien societies, and even within individuals in Starfleet uh, and and the Federation. Uh, and I would say more the the Federation than Starfleet, but you know we could argue that another day. And that's why a lot of people don't have issues with it. Um, my biggest issue with Star Trek Picard is the writing. Um, especially the last episode. Uh, the character of Dodge, I just don't buy her at all. Uh, just strong, powerful robot, superhero woman. Uh, it just reeks of Kurtzman, which is, in my opinion, ripping off better people's work. It It's Blade Runner, it's Serenity, Firefly, Logan, The Expanse. You can see all of those elements. You see no originality in Star Trek, which has its own original aesthetic that it could use, but the repurposers in charge don't have faith in it and they're not making it for you. There's a lot of people who just want to see Sir Patrick Stewart on screen. Uh, and I was, I was hopeful for this series. I really was. And it could turn around and get great, but 
I'm being honest with you right now. I don't like it because of the writing. Uh, the political, especially the orange man bad stuff, hasn't really shown its ugly head yet. Uh, they, the other issues have, and I just don't buy it. I don't buy the Romulan society, a spacefaring society, only using computers for numerical functions. I just don't buy that. That is ridiculous. Uh, and, and hating AI and robots and, and having, you know, having this systemic fear of them for, for ages. Again, I just don't buy it. Uh, and that's, that's where we, and, and also Picard following around a bunch of people, basically being an assistant. Uh, again, there's no emotion or feeling to this. It's very cookie cutter, uh, paint by the numbers, Kurtzman storytelling, because he's just not capable. Uh, and I know it's Shaban writing this in Akiva Goldsman. Well, Akiva Goldsman is the same, uh, Akiva Goldsman has produced work with, that I've watched and enjoyed, but he runs a show called Titans. I uh, watched the entire first season. It had good episodes, the ones he didn't write, uh, the ones Jeff Johns wrote. But we'll see. Uh, as far as what is the, the response to Picard has been largely positive. I'm not going to deny that. Um, but I think after the second episode, especially when... Uh, Admiral Picard stated that uh, I'm not going to call Jordy and Riker and LaForge uh, because they'd be too loyal. I think a lot of people dipped out on that because even the normies want to see the crew. Uh, and I just don't buy that argument. And uh, listen, I think they're going to be back in season two. I think they will bring in the crew. I think they've seen the error of their ways. So we'll have to see on that one. Uh, I'm not willing to throw dirt on the grave of Picard yet. It's only the second episode, but I'm not enjoying it. I gave the first episode a 5.5 out of 10 and the second episode 5 out of 10. And that hasn't changed. Uh, and uh, largely, I mean, I mean, if you like seeing Picard get yelled at by women uh, for 45 minutes, okay. Uh, but Ryan, we can agree to disagree. That's fine. Thank you for the super chat. I really appreciate it. It jumped on me. Uh, DGC for six ninety nine. I hope people in England in mass refuse to pay the TV license without a doctor who would be long gone. It's similar in Canada as well with the CBC. Yeah. And I don't think that's going away anytime soon. Um, yeah, I wonder if they did that. What would, what would happen? I mean, you can't arrest everybody. Can you? Uh, all right, real quick, let's go here. All right, just making sure that is there. Uh, my good friend, John F. Trent, future Pulitzer Prize winner from Bounding Into Comics, did this article prior to our Friday Night Tights podcast, like uh, Thursday, I believe. Um, he went to Google Trends. Now, the um, Jack Beers on Twitter uh, did this with, oh, what show was it? Was It was Star Trek Discovery. And people tried to, you know, knock it down. And like, this isn't a, an exact science, but considering CBS All Access does not share numbers, uh, we don't know. Uh, I heard, uh, was it? No, it was J on JP, uh, an egotastic fun time on his last Picard video. He threw out that, he heard that 10 million people watch Star Trek Discovery, and 20 million people watch Star Trek Picard. Uh, I don't think that's possible because at the time, Star Trek Discovery or CBS All Access didn't have 10 million subscribers. And I don't think CBS All Access has 20 million subscribers. Uh, I think they might have more than 10 now. Uh, I think what Disney Plus recently said, they are around 20 to 25 million right now. Uh, unless people are watching the episode over and over and over again, I just don't think that's possible. Just like I don't think more people watch the Mandalorian than watch the Witcher, uh, based on Netflix having 140 million subscribers to Disney Plus's at their best estimate. Uh, and again, we're taking them at their word 25 million. Now, the argument can be made that they can't lie because of shareholders, and I would believe that. Uh, but I would guess they would exaggerate, like CBS All Access counting 
canceled subscribers, calling them pause subscribers. So John F. Trent, do, uh, Google Trends charts show that uh, charts show interest in CBS All Access as Star Trek Picard plummeted following the show's premiere episode. Using the search term Star Trek Picard, you can see in the graphs below that interest in the show peaked on January 24th, the day after the show initially premiered. The show premiered on January 23rd at 3 a.m. Since then, it has rapidly declined. The first graph shows interest in Star Trek Picard over the past 30 days globally. As you can see, it peaks on January 21st, for fourth and then plummets and there is the chart right there uh, however the google trends 30 day chart goes up to january 29th that means it excludes the premiere of episode 2 episode 2 aired on the 30th at 3 a.m in order to compensate for this i also looked at the seven day chart which includes both january 24th and january 31st today's date at the time as you can see below the debut of Star Trek Picard's second episode peaks at 62. Almost That's almost a 40-point drop from the premiere of the first episode. So there you go. Uh, not only did I look at the global numbers, I also looked at how the show was trending in the States. And while it does maintain a little bit more staying power, it still suffers a significant drop between the first episode and the second episode. Below, you can see the 30-day day chart in the United States. It peaks on January 23rd, with the 24th coming in a close second. Like the global chart, it only shows data up to January 29th. And there you go. And this is all we can do, folks. This is all we can do. Uh, I believe JP, now that I think about it, was probably uh, talking about the Parrot Analytics number. To briefly reset what Parrot Analytics is, it's a company that uses what's called digital impressions. So it uses hashtags, people talking about Star Trek Discovery on Twitter, Facebook, and uh, other social media platforms. And they consider that, that, that impression a view, essentially. I don't know how you can do that. People can say, I'm never going to watch Star Trek Discovery. It sucks. And they'll count that. Uh, I love Star Trek Discovery. They'll count that. Uh, they'll count me talking about it. Uh, it's not how you judge an episode. I think one of the best ways to judge interest is going on YouTube, go to people talking about it positively and negatively, and look at the growth of their channels. Look at the number of views. That will tell you interest in a show. Clearly, The Mandalorian, for example, people were very interested up front. And this is with all TV shows, by the way. Uh, so if you do a video review right after the first episode, that will get more views than all the other episodes, except for the finale, if people are interested. That's important. For example... Game of Thrones would always have, uh, for me, I would always have more views in the finale review episode than the first. Uh, with Westworld, it did the same. With The Mandalorian, there was a lot of views in the first episode. It tailed off, and I got half of what I did the first episode in the final episode, and that's, of course, my live video reviews. It's not an exact science. It's just go to any other channel, and you'll see, see the same thing based on how many subs they have. Uh, da, 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 da. So, like the global chart, I also looked at the past seven days for Star Trek Picard in the United States. This excludes the 30-day peak on January 23rd. Thus, the chart shows the 24th as the peak in the past seven days. That means we aren't exactly seeing the show's true peak in this seven-day chart. Nevertheless, you can see that the second episode also has a significant decrease from the first episode. Star Trek Picard only hit an 88 on January 31st, and at 12 a.m. by 8 a.m. this morning, it was at a 22. Again, that was on the 31st. Uh, what's even more interesting is that you compare the show to Disney Plus's The Mandalorian or Amazon Prime's The Expanse in the United States. The Mandalorian is actually outperforming Star Trek Picard in a 30-day trend, which I would believe it would. More Star Wars fans. And The Expanse is only slightly behind. Yes, that is good. Uh, the Mandalorian's final episode of season one aired over a month ago on December 27th. 
Um, now, that's good because I want The Expanse to do well. The Expanse is better than Picard. The Expanse is better than Star Trek Discovery. The Expanse is one of the best damn shows on TV. You should watch it, that and The Orville. And, of course, The Witcher and The Umbrella Academy, The Boys, uh, even Good Omens. Those were good shows that came out last year that I support. Uh, even The Mandalorian, okay, was, was, was tepidly pretty good. Um, I enjoyed some episodes quite a bit, actually, and I didn't. Uh, but for a first season, I thought it was a bit short. Uh, it's a good live action cartoon. That's what it is. Uh, but I wouldn't put it on the level of uh, The Witcher or Umbrella Academy or The Expanse or The Orville. Uh, so there you go. Uh, and just for my cur curiosity, I also compared the show to Batwoman and Doctor Who in the United States. And there you go. Doctor Who had more interest and, uh, and then Star Trek Picard eclipsed it and then it went way down. But you see all that interest in the States and we go over to, if we go over to, uh, back to TV series finale, hang on a second, we'll go, uh, TV, whoops, I can't type, TV, series finale, and I should be able to go right to Doctor Who, Doctor Who season 12, and we go back to that, so it was trending that, that high, and yet not even a million people were watching it overnight, so a lot of people talk about stuff they don't watch. And that's something I experienced a lot at my comic shop. A lot of people talk about comic books they didn't read. Uh, a lot of people buy comic books they don't read. It's okay. I mean, people are just collectors sometimes. So, yeah. Let's get back to this. Uh, good job, John F. Uh, John F. Trent from Bounding into Comics. Uh, and yeah, keep an eye on the Google charts. I mean, that's the only way we can do it until CBS release the numbers. If you want to prove us all the wrong, all wrong, release your numbers. Uh, the reason they don't, uh, because no company does, that's pretty much internal information, but I'm suspicious of why you would hide that. YouTube doesn't hide their view count. Uh, I think eventually these companies are going to have to start showing their numbers, especially when advertising gets involved and when it gets more competitive. One company is going to come out and start bragging. I mean, Netflix just did by stating uh, The Witcher was their most watched premiere, and I don't doubt that for a second. Uh, and that was during the time The Fall of Skywalker came out. DCG for $6.99. I hope people in... A oh, I read that one. Thank you, DCG. Uh, da, 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 da. AFK Bard for $5 couldn't get past the Rosa Parks episode as if she needed the help of a spastic white woman to help her make a stand. So tasteless. That's what I said in my review. Uh, I completely agree with you. That's uh, my same argument for the Wokeman in the beginning. You're exploiting pretty horrific. I mean, what with the Wokeman, it was horrific uh, moment in history and something horrific happened to this old lady on a bus, uh, and you want to exploit it to virtue signal to win awards, which Doctor Who didn't even do. They had to make up one, and so you could brag about it at your cocktail parties. I think that's, yeah, I think that's uh, despicable, and it's tasteless, and it's classless. But no, man, people go, oh, so stunning and brave. You're so powerful. I feel so empowered and brave and stunning. For watching Rose the Parks. <sighs> Felipe Abrigo, 2,500 Chilean pesos. I heard Birds of Prey is bad. Uh, then I remembered STD's disgusting Bird of Prey redesign. No, uh, no respect for the poor ship. We are all Birds of Prey. And Bird of Prey 5 out there will agree with you. Kapla, kapla. Uh, but I saw what you're doing there. I really did, Felipe. And uh, Birds of Prey still has a review embargo. I think that's a pretty bad sign. Now, the reviews, when they come out, folks, you know what they're going to be. Stunning, brave, powerful. Uh, I saw that fight scene. Um, I mean, yeah, it, it wasn't great. I wasn't impressed. I wasn't impressed by the trailer. I wasn't impressed by the fight scene. Uh, I, 
I think the movie at vi- the very best, it could be Matt and it might not be filled with uh, the anti, you know, anti misogynist rhetoric and, or, or misogynist rhetoric or whatever. I wonder if they're going to talk about the subject of gay sogeny. Oh yeah. That's a real thing. Gay sogeny. Uh, something my wife, you know, listen, misogyny, uh, exists. We're not saying it doesn't exist. Uh, but hearing about it from, the repurposers in Hollywood and the creatives in Hollywood, considering just what we heard uh, with the Amber Heard, just we heard from Amber Heard, or we'll call her Amber Turd, actually, considering what she did. Uh, Yeah, we don't really really hear it from you. Uh, Just entertain us. This is a superhero movie. The superheroes don't look anything like they do in the comics. That is going to factor into this too. And I talk about that in my video. Uh, it's no respect for the comic book audience and the comic book fan, which Hollywood thinks they don't need anymore. Uh, you know what? That early word of mouth from a passionate audience would be really helpful to have comic book fans do that. Uh, the Grand Inquisitor for $5. Gary, we're still waiting for the Nerdrotic slash Dave, Dave Colin Kiv Lab. Oh, we need to do that. Bring the critical drinker and whoever else, uh, but it needs to happen. Hail Nerdrotic. Tell you what. I would love to have Dave Cullen on talking about Doctor Who. Let's get that ginge on. He did a great video today. Go check it out. It's about ginger side. Uh, I think that's a great idea, Grand Inquisitor. Uh, let's make it happen. Uh, I'd be open to do it next week. Uh, Captain Spire for $2. Please keep an eye on your snail mail. God bless. Oh, yes, I will be going by P.O. Box on the way home from my appointment today. Thank you, Captain Spire. I will, and I appreciate that. Trek dog for four, nine, uh, five, 49, uh, five pounds, 49. Is it pence? Something like that. Uh, hail Gary. Great sports wars video. Just a proper cap, uh, missing. Uh, you know, the reason I couldn't, I didn't wear a cap is I couldn't find my old charger power floppy hat. I was going to wear that. It was my grandpa's and I couldn't find it. So I just didn't wear a hat. Uh, David Lutz for $2, uh, but thank you, Trek Dog, uh, for $2. Picard is a soap opera, slow with pillow talk, not Trek. Yep, because it's written by procedural drama average uh, n- with no science f- uh, fiction experience writers. I mean, Alex Kurtzman, Akiva Goldsman, uh, Michael Chabon. Who, uh, you know what? You could be a fan of something. It doesn't mean you're going to be able to write it. And I've seen Michael Chabon at Comic-Con all the time. Uh, I stood next to him in line uh, one year in like 2005 or six. Uh, the Hunky Chunky Funky Monkey for five pounds. Is it legal to discriminate based on talent? <laughs> Maybe that's why they think they can discriminate based on color and gender. Uh, yes, we, we need more POTs in Hollywood at the and at the BBC. People of talent. I agree. The hunky chunky funky monkey. I hope you are doing well. You are brilliant. Uh, Syndic for $5. Hail, my friend. Sent you an email and Twitter DM. Got them. I will respond this afternoon. Hope you are doing well. All those and all those around you. I refuse to watch Picard and ruin my memories of the next generation. And that's the thing you got, you got to factor in. If you can watch something and just go, okay, this is uh, it, it, this is like Ultimate Marvel. Uh, Ultimate Marvel was an alternate Marvel universe that was very popular that I liked. That took the same characters and made it a little darker, a little different. That's essentially what this is. That's what 2009 Star Trek was. That's what Star Trek Picard is. If they came out and said this is all in the Kelvin timeline, I would be okay with it. I would look at the show differently. Uh, it's not as bad as Star Trek Discovery, but you have to consider as a TNG fan, you're now watching a show where your favorite captain quit. Quit. And he might have been wrong about quitting. As a matter of fact, that's what I think at the end, because uh, they've mentioned in interviews, Picard is going to find is going to be humbled. Uh, and it might, he might be in the wrong about Starfleet. They gave a pretty good argument in that episode, why they backed off. So maybe he got too prideful and quit. And wow, that's how I want to remember, uh, one of your favorite captains from Star Trek. Again, it's only the second episode. It's early. 
the first three episodes uh, were when Kurtzman was in charge. And then Michael Chabon took over, I believe, in at episode four or five. And we might see a change because that happened with Star Trek Discovery season two. And we saw a change. Now, it wasn't for the better, but we did see that change. Dead, ti- Dead Tines or Tinez? Dead Tinez for $9.99. Instead of retconning the doctor, they could have just said that Jody do- uh, Jody's doctor or Joe's doctor was Jenny. Uh, times, oh, I'm st- there he goes. Times, oh, like Martinez or Tinez. I got it. Okay. Tinez is pronounced like Tinez in Martinez. Got it. So dead Tinez. I got it right now. Thank you for saying that. I really appreciate that. Um, They could have just rebooted the damn show and said, we're starting over. We're doing it with a woman. I would look at it differently. It would still be bad. But again, I would look at it differently. Trampling all over the original canon and timeline is deliberate. It is deliberate. It is trying to undo those things that were problematic about it before in shoehorning in crap because it's repurposed. That's exactly what a repurposer does. They are not creative enough to create their own stuff. So they want to go around and, and a, a big playground that was built by, by their betters. So ruin of house roundhead for $5. I saw your sports war video. Dan Snyder, the Washington Redskins owner, is terrible too. I took Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers to his awful stadium to see his team. Oh, the Redskins. Yes, I remember. Uh, yes, I remember. That was uh, right after New York Comic Con. Thank you again, Sir Ruin. He, uh, I went to the Joker with him, and it was brilliant. Uh, is 1917 better than the Joker? I'm going to say no. Uh, I liked 1917. Uh, it just won uh, a BAFTA for Best Picture. Well-deserved. Uh, it was a beautifully done movie. And it was beautiful. Uh, it's a war movie, but it's beautifully shot. Uh, it's sad. It's got an amazing cast. Uh, but it's not diverse enough. God. Jesus. Uh, and I thought it was very well done. It's like, it's not as good as Saving Private Ryan. But it's good. It's damn good. It's one of the best movies I've seen. And I did see some good movies this year. Of course, The Joker, uh, Ford versus Ferrari, and uh, 1917. I wish I would have seen it sooner. But if you get a chance, watch it on the big screen because it does count. Uh, it's supposed to be shot like one shot. Uh, you kind of for- I forgot about it for a little while, but it never felt constrained and it moved. And it, the, the pacing on that uh, in 1917 is unbelievable. Ah, some of the best pacing in a movie ever. Uh, Sam Mendes is good, man. He's a good director. He's a good director. Uh, I wish he would have done a better job with Bond, but uh, yeah, he's good. Uh, finally, join the channel. Really enjoy your videos. The Kelvington for $5. I am honored. Thank you for joining the Kelvington. I, I appreciate that. That is high praise. Uh, the Amatic for £4.99. Can't believe she popped in Johnny. She, oh yeah, popped. Can't believe she pooped in Johnny Depp's bed, then had the temerity to jump on a podium and talk to us about abuse, domestic abuse, disgusting human. Truly, she needs a lot of help. Uh, I hope she gets it. Uh, The word toxic is applicable to her. I listened to that recording. And the first thing that comes to mind is... These are the people telling us how to live our lives. <laughs> uh, I feel bad for Johnny Depp. He lost millions of dollars. Uh, it hurt his reputation. I've always liked him as an actor. Uh, not saying he's a perfect human being. Nobody is. But he didn't deserve to get practically canceled. Uh, and I, you know, I, I know J.K. Rowling is crazy. I understand that. And I don't agree with her politically on anything. Uh, But I'm still a fan of her books, and I do give her uh, props for backing Johnny Depp, probably because she knew. Um, Sassy Marie for $5. I keep getting the first episode of Picard as an ad on YouTube. Desperate for viewers? Oh, they are. They had uh, Picard was free on YouTube for a few days. 
And I got screenshots of this. I got to pull them up. But uh, for the first five hours, Picard only received 5,000 views. Now, that was overnight. Then they started embedding the video in advertising. And that shot it up. And it has probably 10 million views. Let's go check right now. But there's something you need to look at. Uh, there's something you need to notice. And it's the like to dislike ratio. And if it's still up. I don't know if it's still up or not. It's still up. Oh, I thought it had 8 million views. I was wrong. I was wrong. It only has 3 million views. And let's go check this out. I got to be careful. I can't show a frame of this or they'll, they'll nick me. Uh, 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 I want to scroll up. That's what I want to do. Okay. So we have, if we uh, look over to the right here a little bit. It's been up since January 30th. It's free. 3,041,347 views. <clears throat> Again, it was at 5,000 views after the first five hours. It only has 21,000 likes and 1.2 thousand dislikes. Uh, more interesting than that. Four thousand seven hundred and ninety eight comments. Now they could be deleting comments because I noticed it was at five thousand on Friday. So now they're at four thousand seven hundred and ninety eight comments, even if they delete comments. Uh, I have a video that has uh, about, I don't know, eighty one thousand views. And that's not I mean, that's low performing for me for the last uh, three months. Uh, almost every video I've done that's been uploaded has, I mean, thankfully I'm grateful as hell, but this has all uh, over 100,000 views. Uh, I have a Picard video that's approaching it. I don't know if the uh, Dr. Who video will, I don't think it will. Um, I, my last video, uh, eclipsed it in under a day. Uh, those videos have six, seven, eight, thousand comments 12,000 comments on some of them the, the, the doctor who video has 5,000 comments on it now youtube automatically holds comments uh that are racy and stuff uh, i try to go through those as much as i can but i can't get everyone uh but a, a video with three million views should have more comments a lot more comments so this is from the video being embedded in advertising on twitter on facebook uh so I don't know how many people are actually watching this. And remember, a U a, they, YouTube counts a view as somebody watching it for, I mean, you know, a couple of minutes uh, with this. Uh, less, less than that, maybe a couple of seconds. And it's only got 3 million, by the way. This is the return. Of, this, is, this is the Hail Mary uh, for CBS, for CBS All Access. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, and remember, I do have to... God, I'm not even going to be able... Let's try to get to this real quick. I'm so behind on Super Chats. I really apologize. It's getting done today. I don't care if the live stream lasts seven hours. Now, the way I do Super Chat Square Ups is I go live on my Patreon, and I answer the questions there. I give them their proper time, and then I post it on Nerdrotic Live. Uh, I did want to get to a couple here. Uh... Curtis Easton for five pounds. And this is from last Sunday. Uh, at least series 24 had dragon fire through the best episode curse of the Fenric. Uh, yes. It, at least. It, it, yes. Uh, we were talking about special effects. Uh, Mary Ashmead for $5. Thank you, Curtis. Uh, Gary, you rock missed you. Uh, while I was on hiatus for my dad passing. And I'm sorry to Mary Ashmead. Uh, my thoughts go out to you, uh, losing a dad, uh, I mean, just to state the obvious, completely sucks. I lost mine to cancer. Fuck cancer. Uh, I'm not getting notifications. Do you still have times for your streams? I do mostly. And I have been hearing a lot that people are not getting notifications. 
Not surprised. Uh, Leaf Eric, because you guys rock for $10. Thank you. And he was talking about the critical drinker and bulls trucker as well. Captain Sinclair for $4.99. I sent, uh, I sent a super chat saying that I sent you guys some drinking cash. Here's some more. Thank you, Captain Sinclair. I will use it for coffee. Jim Dingler for $10. What if Thrawn create, oh, we read this one. So I am caught up on Doctor Who. Those were from last week. So I just wanted to catch those few. And now we'll get back to you. Uh, a DCG for 279 Canadian. I'm curious to see how Birds of Prey will do. I am as well. I think, uh, <clears throat> listen, it could make money. Uh, spoilers. My video is going to say Birds of Prey flop. Of course it's going to say that. But it could make money because it's cheap and ticket prices are ridiculous. So if you are kind enough to watch my video when it comes out in a couple hours, uh, I, str I string the video with uh, screenshots of Fandango. And uh, I want you to look at the ticket prices for some of those. Uh, $15, $20. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. So yes, it, it could. Uh, I don't think it's going to make $50 million. I could be wrong. There are no tickets sold for this thing. I checked this morning. Hatchet Mark in a gorilla's back. Four ninety nine. dollars <laughs> Want to really see how badly Rise of uh, the Fall of Skywalker did versus older films like Lord of the Rings divided totals by average spot price of gold for that year. See real return on value. You know what, Hatchet? <clears throat> I'll do that. I'll get with Odin and we will get the adjusted for infl inflation uh, box office for Lord of the Rings and Avatar because that article stated that The Fall of Skywalker did better, better than all three Lord of the Rings films in Avatar in December, which is just utter bullshit. It's utter, utter bullshit because The Fall of Skywalker didn't do as well as the previous two Star Wars films. It's the worst performing trilogy film. It fell off a cliff. It is a Disney Star Wars flop. And if they made money, they barely made money. You need to factor in the reshoots, the marketing, the fact that the theaters get a cut of the ticket price. Countries get a cut of the ticket price. If I mean, they basically invested $8 to make uh, $2 back. Uh, they gave somebody $8, they got $10 back. Uh, they made $2. That's it. DCG for uh, six ninety nine Canadian. When do you think the entertainment industry will understand woke trash doesn't sell? They're starting to understand it now. Um, you have to get past. You have to get past their pride and their ego because that is those are the only two things that trump cash in Hollywood. And pride and ego. Oh, I mean, now listen. They'll give up their pride and their ego to get a role, but as far as their image in public. Uh, that's the only thing that really matters to them. Uh, you make an actor, a director, a creative, an executive look bad in public, man, you're done. You are done. That is the worst sin in Hollywood. Now, if you get on a casting couch to get a role, I mean, that's just part of, that's just a, a day that ends in why. Uh, AFK Bard for $10. Gary, I'm confused. Didn't Doug have a cult, he a cut healed? Didn't, uh, oh, Dodge, Dodge. It says Doug, D-A-U. Didn't Dodge have a cut healed? Didn't they say she's a human with a positronic matrix in her brain, uh, a positronic matrix in her brain? How is she super strong? If I get, I get smart, can, if I get smart enough, can I drive pile, can I drive, can I pile drive? Three pound, 300 pound men. Let's try that again. If I get smart, can I, because you have it drive pile 300 pound men. Uh, if I get smart enough, can I pile drive 300 pound men? Yes. According to Star Trek, you can, AFK Bard. If you get smart, you can jump 50 feet in the air. Uh, I'm guessing that there, she's also going to be, uh, she's also going to be part Borg uh, and maybe part Romulan, uh, which I believe, yeah, Romulans are stronger than humans. So I don't know if they can, they can't jump 50 feet. Uh, well, no. Well, in the Kelvin universe, they can Spock 
did that big jump at the end of uh, Star Trek Into Derpness. Uh, Professor Parrot, it's X. Oh, Professor X Parrot for four ninety nine. Hail Gary, been and st been a Star Trek fan my whole life. The Next Generation was my show. Can't watch Star Trek Picard. No crew. Crusher killed off screen. Weird data clones. Scared for my Lord of the Rings. Yes. I have a video in the works about Lord of the Rings. They are coming for Lord of the Rings. And I am worried as well. I will be so pissed. I will be just so pissed. Because I want that show to be good. My hope, my, my dream is to be reviewing positively a Lord of the Rings show. Where we can just come together and enjoy one IP out there that has been free of this crap. And I'll preface this. Lord of the Rings is supposed to be British mythology. It doesn't mean you can't be inclusive. I won't have a problem if it's done well, like The Witcher. There's certain characters you can't do that with. I think there's certain characters you can. We'll have to see if it works. Um... AKA Blonded for $5. Glad I'm catching up with you today. Good to see you all, all of you. And it's good to see you all. And, and he, he, was, he was saying that to the chat as well. It's good to see you as well. Yeah, it's, it's good to be back on the Nooner. Uh, and there will be another one tomorrow, 11.30 a.m. I will be back tomorrow. Uh, and there will be a live stream posted later this afternoon as well. After I get some tea. The Kelvington for $5. Uh, thank you again for joining, my friend. I appreciate it. Uh, da, da, da. Sassy Marie for five dollars. I keep getting a first. Oh, I read that one already. Okay, Kilroy was here. Five dollars from what Midnight's Edge reported. The first three episodes episodes were okay, and then four and then four on it goes full on STD. So if there's a change, it's likely for the worse. That is what I've heard as well. I heard uh, the first three episodes were slow. They're all on Earth. And then it just goes nuts and it goes out into space and Picard starts going action Picard, Picard hard. Uh, but I'm taking it one episode at a time. I've actually, uh, I've heard some of the leaks. I don't know them all. And I've, I've refrained because I want to watch this. Uh, not that they would affect my view on it at all. Uh, but I just, uh, I want to be surprised by some stuff. That's all. But I do know the major things, especially uh, Crusher being killed off screen would be one of the worst offenses in pop culture history. And I'm not kidding. And if they do that, whoa, they'll lose a lot of fans if they do that. I can't, it, I can't see that being true. If that is true, uh, which, I mean, what the hell? What am I saying? Of course it can be true. <laughs> of course it can be true. Ah. Uh, Syndek for two dollars. I demand my official welcome to the Jaloja level. Jaloja, Syndek. Uh, the P corner. I'll take you to the P corner. A Luvarian Imakara for two dollars. I e oh boy, it just jumped on me. I emailed you uh, January 2020 eBay sales for Picard. Oh, awesome. You know what? Somebody else emailed me all the official licensing. For Star Trek Picard, by the way. Uh, that's a video for another day. So they've done it twice now. I know the licenses for Star Trek Picard. I know what they've licensed as far as toys and shirts and stuff. Uh, spoilers, it's not very much. It's not very much. Uh, and I would like to thank the... That wasn't this person, but I would like to thank the person, uh, you know who you are, for emailing me. I appreciate that. Gray Ghost for $5. Hail Nerdrotic. Why was Joker so controversial? When it was basically the acclaimed monster with Charlize Theron and Patty Jenkins from 16 years ago. Because it starred a white male lead and the fake ass access media, mainstream media needed a narrative. So they made one up. And that's why YouTube exists. And that's why we're all getting together here because we were just sick to death of the access media and the mainstream media making shit up and then accusing us of making shit up. Um, now, people make shit up and they put it on Reddit. People can report it uh, and that's fine. And people, you know what? A lot of times Reddit leaks are true. Uh, as a matter of fact, a lot 
a lot they have been true. And there's nothing wrong with talking about that when you don't claim to be an impartial journalist, when you are just a person with an opinion on YouTube, or you have a mask, you're in, in a secret layer. Uh, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. But it was just a bullshit narrative. That's all it was. And we're getting that with the fall of Skywalker too. It was fan service. That, that, that is bullshit. Uh, AFK Bard. CBS shot themselves in, in both feet. They put Star Trek Picard online out of fear of views. But every normie I know wants to watch it, but don't have CBS All Access because they won't buy it. Yeah. What are you going to buy CBS All Access for? Picard and what? There's too much out there. And that's what's going to end the streaming wars is just there's so much. It's ridiculous. Uh, Dark Star 76 for five dollars. Hail Gary just got home from work four o'clock here. What did I miss? The greatest live stream ever. Quite frankly, you did. No, uh, CBS shot themselves in the foot. The minute they decided to use the Jar Jar Abrams aesthetic, they should have created their own aesthetic. That's it. Um, but they were lazy. They had this pre-built aesthetic that they thought they could just import in. Uh, the movies were still going at the time, but you could see the downhill slide the movies were taking. Star Trek Four is not going to happen. Uh, and if it does, it will bomb in the theaters. And that's despite Noah Hawley, uh, who I think is a very talented writer. Uh, he did a great job with Fargo and the first two seasons of Legion. And I think he could probably write something worth watching, but there's just no interest. Star Trek is dead. Uh, it's for a bunch of old people. And uh, yeah, that's, it's aging out. And some people who like to hashtag uh, 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 Gavin McGinnis used to say, he had a saying that uh, people are, oh, I like science because I posted a picture of an asteroid on my Instagram. And that's basically what the modern Star Trek fan is. Oh, I like science. I like science fiction because I posted a picture of Spock on Instagram. That's the depth of their fandom for the most part. Uh, if they want to watch the episodes, they're more than welcome to come in. I'm not gatekeeping. It's not like they can't be fans, but you know, take the time to actually watch the show. Uh, but if you look at the, the Google trends, the vast majority of people don't, but they love to talk about it anyway. Uh, and that's fine. You can say, I don't want to watch this based on what Patrick Stewart stated in his own variety article or what the repurposer said about the show. And I don't blame you at all. Uh, frankly, if I didn't have a channel, I wouldn't watch it. I wouldn't watch, uh, Star Trek. I would have watched Star Trek discovery a couple episodes and dipped. I would have watched Picard one episode and dipped. Uh, I wouldn't have watched, uh, the fall of Skywalker. I'd have just gone on my merry day. There's a lot of comic books. I don't buy anymore. I used to be a habitual comic buyer and I don't buy them anymore. I'm done. You know, I mean that, I mean, a lot of you guys don't know me, but the fact that I stopped buying comics is like hell freezing over. It's, I mean, I've done it all my life since I was four. When I, you know, would take the trash out when I was six or seven, when I was old enough, I used to beg my mom for money when I was young. She would buy me comics to shut me up. And that was the only thing I would read. Uh, then later on, I did chores to buy comics. I got a paper route to buy comic books. Uh, yeah. And I stopped buying them. I stopped. I, I don't have a subscriber at any comic shop. I just cut it off. Terminator and Ghost Recon Breaking Point. Yeet, yeet, says Modalicious. I I don't know what that means, but thank you for the $2. Uh, Chrono2959. They are Luke Skywalkering our hero, all of our heroes. Yes. They're giving, giving him the Jake Skywalker treatment. And we, I mean, God, we knew this was coming. Uh, so you can't blame people for being jaded about something before it comes out. We watched Doctor Who. We watched Star Trek Discovery. We watched Disney Star Wars. Uh, hope is not a strategy. When you get like slapped around three times in a row, it's now it's, I'm, it's, you know, you got to be like, uh, you're from Missouri. You got to show me. Uh, DCG from 13. For $13.99, feels like yesterday that Kathleen Kennedy got Star Wars, but by the time she was rumored to be leaving in 2021, she would have been a, in power for almost a decade. 
I heard she's looking to ruin Indy next. Yep. Yep. Um, that will piss me off. Uh, Crystal Skull sucked, but I just pretend it doesn't exist. I actually like Indiana Jones more than I like Star Wars. I think Raiders of the Lost Ark is a perfect film, uh, along with Lord of the Rings, along with a lot of other people. I watched Raiders of the Lost Ark in theaters 15 times. It was in a theater for a year near my house, for an entire calendar year. Uh, You'll never see that anymore. All right, I've got to run. My appointment's at 2, and it takes me one hour to drive seven miles to downtown to go see my sponsor. Uh, yes, seven miles, one hour drive. That's why I stay home and live stream. So I will be back on later on Patreon to do the Super Chat Square Up. Thank you for all the Super Chats. If I missed one, I'll make it up in the Square Up. I apologize it's taken this long. Uh, that will not happen again, by the way. That will not happen again. Uh, so I will get that all firmed up today. Look for a video coming out very, very soon uh, about Birds of Prey. And uh, in the meantime, if you haven't, uh, I have a Star Wars video that I popped up, but a lot of you have watched it, so thank you. Uh, Welcome to all the new subscribers. Make sure you are still subscribed. And we got a super chat in. I'll get a Philomax. Uh, They should have just sold it to Seth MacFarlane and let him do Star Trek uh, justice. Why let those who are not Trekkers or Trekkies do a show that's clearly not... uh, Let's clearly don't do a show they clearly don't like. Shame on CBS. Will you go see the Sonic movie? I probably won't. I'll be honest with you. I won't. I'm not into Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, My kid is, if my kid wants to see it, I'll go. I'll go. Okay, last Super Chat. I really got to go. Thank you, by the way. Thank you. Augustine uh, Quintlet. Sorry if you, sorry if you get asked this a lot, but which doctor is your favorite? Never apologize for that. I will answer that question all the time because it changes. It quite frankly changes. Uh, Aside from the obligatory fourth doctor, it is the third doctor, John Pertwee and David Tennant. Uh, But I also like Matt Smith a lot. I like the Matt Smith doctor. Chris Eccleson, I think, gave the best performance of a doctor. Uh, In my opinion, uh, the second best performance was by Peter Capaldi. Uh, but of course, it's anything after Tom Baker, but John Pertwee, I just love his attitude. He was funny. Uh, it was it was a fun era of Doctor Who. Uh, and I think he had the best, uh, him, him and Matt Smith had the best premiere episodes. Uh, Spearhead from Space is just one of my all-time favorites. Uh, so yeah, um, thank you very much for the super chats. And did we get another? Oh boy. Okay, I've really got to make this the last one. Will Murray. Uh, sent you a picture of me in Hobbiton on Twitter. Uh, get your ass on, get your ass on the plane and go. I will. I will someday. All right. So again, thank you. Please like, share, and subscribe, and have a great day. I will see you tomorrow at 11:30 a.m. Again, apologies. I have to cut this off, but I have to get my sober on. So remember, kids, not all who wander are lost. <laughs>